All right, greetings, Preacher John here. Waiting for the bus, number 208. I left the house a little early so I can do a, go to the bank and do a couple errands. And I'm just uh, waiting here. This is the 208 going out to 55th and Pearl Parkway. It's quite a distance for, uh, it's on the eastern edge of the city. The reason I wanted to do this is uh, I'm gonna do something else uh, in this video. I don't know exactly, but uh, why I'm doing this is I hear people with excuses. <laughs> and I'm building a church without a car. I am preaching every day on the street without a vehicle, a car, uh, without personal transportation. And I realize a lot of people live in different locations. When I was in Redding, California, there's no way I could do what I'm doing, sort of. But I could have took, taken a, an Uber downtown to Redding, and then from there I could have taken some different uh, locations. Uh, in other words, I could have taken an Uber. Uh, it's, you know, it's about the only thing we got now that's, you know, that if you don't have a bus system in your town, because in Redding, California, they're really, I mean, there was a bus system, but it really, you know, there, there was a bus system, but there wasn't a bus system. I mean, it was horrible. Here in the front range of Colorado, from Fort Collins all the way to Colorado Springs, is a wonderful busing system here. So uh, I'm really uh, honored and privileged and, you know, just to have a great uh, transportation system, public transportation system. So, uh, but the idea came to me to do this because uh, like if I was in Reading, I would go from my home there in Sandpoint and I would take the uh, Uber downtown. It's like $7. And then from there, I can walk a mile or two miles. Like I walk two miles a day to my location, two miles back on the average. So I could walk two miles to a location and back and I could do the same thing I'm doing here with one Uber ride to a main central uh, heart of a city and then walk to my different location so you don't have to take an Uber to every single corner. Just take it to a central location, like I live in a central location. God put me in a location here in Boulder that I'm just about right smack dab in the center of the city of Boulder. So I can walk to just about every place except for the edges of the city. And that's where I need to take the bus because it's like four miles rather than two miles. I walk halfway to the edge of the city limits. And there's about 150,000 people live here, I guess, something like that. So it's you know it's a medium-sized little town, city, whatever you want to call it. I mean, it's not like Denver, a big metropolis. That's different, but the same thing there. If there was no bus system, I could take an Uber to downtown Denver. Yeah, it'd be a little expensive, uh, or I wouldn't do it there. But let's say I lived in Denver and I didn't want to take the bus. I could find the center of Denver, for example, and I could take an Uber from my apartment or house or wherever you live to the that central hub location and then I could uh, uh, walk from there and then uh, walk back or you know or there's you know there's lots of different things in other words be creative ask God for his help like when uh, uh, Golden's bus canceled so what did I do when uh, I, I prayed you, you always pray you don't just figure things out on your own you don't ask other people for their opinion you ask God for his opinion God's opinion. What do you want me to do, God? You don't do things on your own. You want to do things based on what God tells you to do. So uh, uh, I prayed, and God said, find another way. That's what he said, find another way. Um, that's so clear and exact. And so the last three times, I have found another way. And I'm at a bus stop here. you got to remind me. <laughs> bus stops, if you know what I mean. You know, nobody rides bus, they don't know what I mean. <laughs> Gum. <laughs> on the bottom of my foot. <laughs> the perils of being a street preacher <laughs> on the city bus. Anyways, I watch all my pennies, I watch all my dollars. I'm extremely frugal with all my money, with the Lord's money, because it's not my money. I've given all my money and all my time and all my life to the Lord, and I serve God 100% with everything I have. <laughs> Gum. <laughs> Ain't it great? <laughs> oh well. <laughs> I got another 10 minutes here, so I just wanted to do this. I thought it'd be kind of fun. So talk to you later, guys. I love you, man. Bye-bye. In fact, I'm going to see you again in another few more minutes or a moment because I'm going to take the bus, and that's where my next video will be. <laughs> All, right. All right. Peace, my brother. All 
All right, greetings, Preacher John out here at 55th and Pearl Parkway. If you could see what I've got rigged up here from my camera, you'd be laughing just as much as I'm laughing because, you know, sometimes you got to do something that's not normal. So I got my this uh, selfie stick tripod, I mean, uh, monopod type thing stuck in my cone. So it's a little higher. So I'm not looking down at the camera. I'm looking, kind of looking uh, to the camera, to you. Uh, is it recording? Uh, yeah, uh-oh. I might, is it too loose here? Sorry. <laughs> Still practicing, okay? So uh, I got a little nervous. I did my video, as you saw back there at the bus stop waiting for the 208. And we're coming down the road and the bus driver says, uh, the road ahead is closed. I'm gonna go out 50 feet, I'm gonna go out Pearl. I mean, I thought, oh my goodness, how am I gonna get back to the post office? Cause right over there, uh, if I can turn this, right over there is the post office somewhere. I don't know if you can see that or not. And. Uh, but he says, no problem, you'll be able to walk over there. So it's kind of like what I was saying earlier. You can take an Uber to your location and then walk to wherever you got to go. Well, that's kind of what happened today. <laughs> Little, I didn't know I was prophesying. <laughs> so I had, he let me off way down the road there and had to come all the way back over to here. So it's kind of, it's kind of the same thing what I was talking about as taking a, a, a ride to a central location. And then once you get to that central location, then plan out all your corners uh, in a two mile radius from that central location or something like that. That's kind of what I do, a two mile radius, two and a half mile radius of my home, which is in the center of the city that I live in, which is Boulder. And uh, so uh, I started coming out here about three or, this is my fourth time I believe out here. Uh, we're way out, as you can tell, let me just see if I can turn this around here, can you see? So uh, this right here, is uh, what is there? this is uh, 55th so we're at the very end of the uh, eastern side of Boulder and right across the street see that's all open space there it's all country from there on out all the way to the next town and uh, then over here is where Valmont that's where I was going to come down the street here and come this way where those cars are but that's not going to work today or probably tomorrow too I don't know what I may be walking five miles back home let me walk over here uh, <laughs> This Jerry rig, I, that's what, I, I guess I try to love, I, li I like Jerry because I Jerry rig everything together, <laughs> trying to save money, you know. Uh, there's a the flat irons right behind me there. Uh, so all this is open space. We have trails that all go throughout the city. We have about 150 miles of biking paths, bike paths. Uh, it's really beautiful out here. And uh, last time I was out here, there was three feet, two, I don't know, it's about up to my knees. I had to clear a big spot to stand. And then I had to stand way over there because uh, it was too much snow. And everyone was looking at me and going, man, that guy is that's serious. Um, but it was really interesting. I met some, I saw somebody, no, I walked in the bank. I, was, did, I had to go a bank run. And I walk in the bank and one, two, three, four people all know me. <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing. And they asked, what corner are you at today? And I, I told them out here at 55th and Pearl. All right, man. I mean, they know what I'm doing this morning. I'm out, you know, doing my stretches. My first thing, as soon as I wake up, I stretch. I do exercises in the morning along with my prayer. I, I join prayer and exercising together. I don't pray and exercise together, but I, I, do, I do prayer. And then after my prayer, I do exercise. So immediately after my prayer, I do exercising, exercise have for 30 years. Anyways, uh, uh, one way of staying in shape, <laughs> you know, spiritually stay in shape, physically stay in shape, join the two together. So anyways, uh, I walk out of my door and the guy says, hey, how you doing? I forget your name. I said, name's John. Oh, that's right. And he said, where are you going at today? I said, what do you mean? Well, what corner are you going to? I said, oh, you know that I'm the guy, yeah, you're the guy with the big sign. <laughs> That's five, three or four people one day. That's, that's the beauty of being consistent with the Lord Jesus Christ. Same way I was in the truck for all those years. I was consistent as a preacher in the trucking world. That's why I was called back in 30 some odd years ago, Preacher John. My handle used to be something else, but they said, no, that's not your handle, it's Preacher John. And so all the truckers that I know and hung out with, uh, they started calling me Preacher John, you know? It used to be something else, but uh, that's I was known for being a preacher of Jesus Christ. When somebody needed prayer, 
which not everybody needed prayer, but when they did need prayer, guess who they came to? That's right, Preacher John. Because they knew, and I've told everybody when they call me, you know what, I'm gonna talk about Jesus, If you, that's why I called. <laughs> you see right there? That's a beautiful, <laughs> these guys that need some hit trucks too. <laughs> right there, that's a witnessing of what God can do here in Boulder, Colorado. He can, he can empower people, he can lift people up and where people get excited about sharing the gospel, about honking and about doing different things. It's amazing what people can do. So let me jump into the Bible here. I've got a couple verses to, I wanna go over. Man, this is kinda, kinda goofy. <laughs> God bless you, man. That's Boulder Ready Mix. <laughs> See? As the Western, those guys are honk too, probably. A lot of the Western garbage trucks, which is right there at the corner. Uh, can you see that guy? Uh, so uh, I don't know if I'm doing this right. I don't know. I don't know. I can't. See. Over there someplace. I can't see on the camera here. <laughs> this thing goes goofy, man. Anyways, uh, I, I, anyways, I, 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 want so much, I want to say so many things, but I want to read this verse here because it's really good, okay? So uh, we're in uh, Matthew chapter 6, verses 19, 20, and 21. I've read them several times, but I'm going to read them again. Matthew 6, verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. Verse 20. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. 21. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Thank you, Lord. So I'm going to go to two different verses here and back up a couple things. God bless you, man. Got ladybugs flying on my. <laughs> the joy of the Lord is your strength. When you come out here to preach, you know, for those who are just getting started, you really have to keep the joy of the Lord. And how do you get the joy of the Lord? A lot of times you just got to. You know, you think about Jesus. This is not what I want to talk about, but this is what the Holy Ghost wants to say. Uh, you know, seriousness is important because we're preaching a serious message, salvation, for people to repent from their sins, quit loving the world, and come to Jesus and lay down their life uh, to serve the Lord. Uh, but you need to have the joy of the Lord. You need to be able to smile and laugh because we won. If you're saved, like I witnessed to a lady waiting for the bus after I did that video, you know, she is so far gone. And I asked her a question. I said, what happens if everything you told me was not the truth? Now, she's about 70 years old, maybe 65, 70. She's, you know, same age I am. <laughs> she said, I'd be a liar. And she said, I said, that's right. So I gave her a gospel track. And she wanted to rip it up in front of me. I said, hey, don't rip it up. Just put it in your pocket. It's a booklet of all kinds of interesting things. She said, oh, okay. So she stopped ripping it, put it in her pocket. She said, God bless you, man. <laughs> a lot of these guys are used to seeing me in town and everywhere. So a lot of, you know, I don't go to these corners but every seven weeks now. And uh, so I'm not, uh, I'm not always uh, in people's face out here on the street. This is the uh, 55th and Pearl Parkway. Not too busy now, but it gets really busy, really busy. Anyways, uh, I'm going to go to two verses based on this, Matthew 6 through 19. So I'm going to talk about treasure, okay, because it says lay not for yourself treasures. And then the next verse is treasure, and the next, so all three verses have treasure in them. Oh, I got to, hang on, on my ears. Hang on. Ambulance, I mean, no, what is that? Fire truck, rescue. Yeah, Boulder Rescue. All right. I don't have my earplugs in. I'll put them in as I'm done with the video. I hope this is working out for you guys. I, I love doing these videos. So we're going to turn to Matthew 19, 21. This is an example. Can I do this? I don't know. <laughs> there it is. 1921 uh, is a great year, right? 1921. <laughs> if you know anything about history in America, 1921, everyone was thinking that we're never going to have poverty again. Uh, Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, my rubber band's in the way, hast, 
and give to the poor. <laughs> this is crazy. I gotta start it again, sorry man. Uh, verse 21 of chapter 19 in the book of Matthew. Uh, Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that... Oh, my rubber band, sorry. <laughs> I got all these verses I want to go to here. I'm going to read it one more time. <laughs> I love the Lord. I love serving the Lord. This is the greatest thing I can ever do in my life, man. I mean, the greatest. I, I wish everybody would be doing what I'm doing. It, you'll just, you'll, your whole life will change. Being a missionary is the greatest thing in the world. Verse 21, Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. So you see right there is an example of what I've been talking about, uh, is when you give to the poor, you're laying up treasure. A lot of things that we do is treasure. That's what the King James calls treasure. And, uh, but I'm not, but he didn't say the point of selling everything was not the point. You, he could have sold everything and kept it to himself. A lot of people sell everything. They sell everything they have and they buy a motorhome. Yeah, you know. Or they sell everything they have and they buy a new house or whatever the case may be. But here, he, sold, he told them to sell everything and give to the poor. That's a very unique commandment. It was only right here that they did that. Actually, it's in Acts chapter 2 also. But, uh, and give to the poor and you'll have treasure in heaven. Because a lot of people ask, well, how do I get treasure in heaven? Well, what I'm doing right now, I'm putting treasure in heaven. Because I'm not doing this for myself. This is not for me. I, I, I'm already saved. I'm already going to heaven. I've already got treasure. I mean, I'm ready to go today. Jesus came back tonight or today or right now as I'm doing this video, I'm gone. If you believe that the rapture is going to come before the tribulation. If you don't, well, then you're going to hang around. But I'm not going to hang around. <laughs> My father is a loving father. He's not going to let me go through that tragedy. There's no reason why I have to run out in the street and get killed. I can stay on the, in the, on the grass here away from the traffic. Right? It's two, you know, people serve two different fathers. The father I love loves me. He wants me to stay on the grass out of the traffic, you know? And my kids, I don't, I don't want my kids to run out in the traffic and get killed, you know? Well, a lot of people think that that's how God is. God's not that way. So let me go to another verse uh, that's really gonna shock you. Uh oh, I got too many rubber bands here. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'll throw this on the ground here, pick it up later. So this is an extreme example. Very, very extreme. Uh, very extreme. It's in uh, Matthew, again, chapter, uh, where am I? Whoops. Um, whoops. 24. Uh, whoops. Sorry, sorry. Hang on, everybody. Uh, uh oh, I took all my rubber bands out. Uh, Matthew, uh, let's go to 1921, and then the other one is at 2542. Sorry, man. Sorry, a little disorganized here. 2542. The rubber bands don't last too long out here in the sun. They only last about a month or two, and then they break. And they broke on the way out here. So Matthew 25, verse 45. I'll go to 45. Uh, then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. I'm going to stop right there for a second. That's Jesus talking about something that laying up for yourselves treasures in heaven. So the idea is that you have to, if you love Jesus, you're going to keep his commandments. And if you don't know his commandments, don't go asking people. Ask Jesus, and the Holy Ghost will take you through the word of God of different commandments. And if it's at all you think of, oh, yes, yeah, just love God with all your heart and love people. That's three of the greatest commandments. Well, that's fine, but how do you walk that out? See, a lot of people quote the golden rule, you know, that, that rule of, you know, that law, the golden law, golden rule, however you want to call it, and then that, but they don't do anything about it. They don't know, they don't do anything. So here's lots and lots of different examples. Well, here's another one. So this, is, like I said again, this is a very extreme example. So he's talking about being hungry, being thirsty, being a stranger, being naked, have no clothes, being sick, and in prison. So those are different examples there of how you can lay treasure in heaven. 
Because when you do that to people who are in prison or who are sick or who are in uh, 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 nursing homes, and uh, my first ministry was in a nursing home, not my first uh, real ministry, other than preaching on the ship and things like that. When I went to Bible school, that was my first ministry. I went to a nursing home. That was amazing. I learned a lot about compassion there. So uh, hunger, thirst, stranger, clothing, sick, and prison. Jesus says, Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye, all of you, did it not. Right? Did it not. That's Matthew 6, 19. Lay not up for yourselves. Right? So not, uh, sorry I'm yelling, to any of these, to the least of these, you did it not to me. So if you don't lay treasure up in heaven, you're not laying it into, into the kingdom of Jesus, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. When you do something like what I'm doing right now, I'm doing this unto Jesus. It's like this, that's what it says. If, if I do this, I'm doing it to Jesus, for Jesus, to Jesus, however you want to word it. But it's all about Jesus. All about Jesus. And that's what he's saying right here. It's not for us. It's not for them, it's for Jesus. We do everything, word and deed, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So here's the next verse. Now this is the kick. There's the kicker right here. This is where it really, really gets serious. Where Matthew 6, 19, 20, and 21 get really serious. Because a lot of people flip all that off and think, well, you know, I ain't going to do that. I'm just going to smile and be happy. Well, good luck with that. Well, don't say the word luck. I don't like that. I mean, you know, whatever. Don't say that. Uh, verse 46. And these, who's these? That's the people who do not lay up treasure in heaven. I know that this is a big deal here, and you don't have to receive this, okay? You, this is just something that if you want to delve into it more in the Word of God, you can. Because there's something to think about and something to pray about. Verse 46 of Matthew 25. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment but the righteous into life eternal. You see the two parts there? A lot of people will get mad at me right here because they think, well, if, you mean to tell me, John, if I don't give to the poor, God's going to throw... That's not what it says. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 19 and 20, do, do not stop laying treasures upon earth. What's the first treasure you need, you need to... You should not lay on earth. What's the first treasure? You got it? It's your heart. That's verse 21. You lay your treasure up in heaven. What's that? Your heart. You put your heart into heaven. How do you do that? By receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Be baptized in the name of Jesus. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. And serve Him with all your heart, your soul, mind, body. You love Jesus. <laughs> this thing is getting all wiggly here. <laughs> Sorry. Because what happens if you don't lay your treasure up in heaven? According to this verse, that first treasure, that first treasure of your heart. Well, let me read it to you. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment. Everlasting punishment. If you read all down through here, that's where Satan is thrown. That's where hell is thrown. That's where death is thrown. And that's where all the people whose names are now found written in the book of life. I tell you, like the lady today at the, at the bus stop said, you know, we never die. That's right, we never die. That's why the lake of fire is created for those who will refuse, refuse Jesus. So, Lord, I thank you for the reading of your word. I thank you for the preaching of your gospel. I thank you that you are doing something unique with this ministry and this street corner today and the city of Boulder and the state of Colorado. I thank you, Lord, that you're using this servant, this truck driver. <laughs> Lord, I thank you for using me. I thank you, Lord, that you use others, that I encourage them, Lord, that I set the example. Use me, Lord, as an example, that you use the weakness of this world. Lord, I thank you for helping me be an example of being a weak vessel and uh, being of clay with the potter continually shaping me, even all that for all these years. Lord, I surrender myself completely. And Lord, I ask that you help others to surrender themselves, to lay their life down to be continually shaped by the potter for a 
for a worthy vessel to be filled with the water of life, the living water from the living God. We thank you, Jesus. We praise you right here at 55th and Pearl in Boulder, Colorado. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, there you go. All right, God bless you, man. I love you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Let me turn this thing off. Thank you.